So do you see that we're recording? I do. Good. Okay. So what we're going to explore is our psi abilities, our paranormal access to the information field. And the consciousness revolution explains this. So what do I mean by all that? Um, I interviewed 65 visionary scientists for a book trilogy and their vanguard leaders in the consciousness revolution. And this is opposed to the materialist paradigm that dominates science. So let's, let's look at what some of these brilliant physicists and doctors said. Um, Minos Kapitos is a physicist. Materialism greatly limits our abilities. We're more than we think we are. And non-local dimensions allow for extraordinary abilities. That's really the key. And we'll get to non-local in a minute. Chris Rowe is a British psychologist. He says, our current psychological model of what it is to be human is incomplete. The materialist model says our brains are all we have, and but they don't know where we store memories or that kind of thing. And the consciousness revolution says, no, we have access to mind, consciousness, memories. It continues after death. So how can that be explained? Uh, quantum mechanics. So as you know, quantum mechanics studies the small, <clears throat> the atom, the quark, the bison, that kind of thing. And um, what quantum mechanics says, there's an unknown, non-local, meaning it's everywhere, source that can't be shielded. It exists beyond space and time. <clears throat> but we know that intention impacts like an atom. And people like Ions Dean Radens and Stephen Schwartz have done experiments where they do things like take chocolate, you might want to try this, and divide it in half, and one half gets blessed, the other half nothing, and then we compare the mood and the taste after we've tried the blessed chocolate and the unblessed chocolate. Mm -hmm. um, so quantum mechanics is closest to reality, not common sense, because our <clears throat> common sense says this physical body is um, uh, solid, but we know that it's 99.9% .9 empty. And common sense says we know what matter and what the universe is, but we only know 5% because the rest is dark energy and dark matter that scientists really don't know how, what it is. Um, the great quantum physicist Max Planck said, the mystery is atoms don't exist. They just exist as potential. And they don't become like a wave or a particle until we observe it or focus on it in some way. So consciousness is primary. So the materialist paradigm that dominates is also wrong about linear time uh, because we can influence the past. We can <clears throat> read into the future as experiments show. Uh, locality, really everything is connected. There's nothing just strictly local. Uh, materialism says we're just a bag of chemical uh, processes. And when we die, it all dissipates. There's nothing left. <clears throat> but we know from near-death experiences and study of children who remember their past lives, University of Virginia, that um, death is not the end of consciousness. Uh, lots of studies about the power of mind, intention, <clears throat> healing, even from a distance, ESP, getting information from dreams. Like one of the, uh, the doctors um, wrote a book about women who remember in their dreams that they have breast cancer. So if their doctors are cool, they'll say, ah, well, let's check that out. And the ones whose doctors paid attention to them um, uh, lived, and the ones who didn't, some of them died. Um, we know that there's from Indians have known for thousands of years that there's chakras and different kind of nadis, uh, lines in the body. Um, Chinese have known for thousands of years about the meridians. So there's a whole other world 
that is beyond the material. Um, so the logical question is, <clears throat> what is consciousness? And it is uh, hard to define. And all the scientists that I interviewed for the trilogy said it's really hard to define. But they used words like one mind, spirit, energy, the force, matrix, hologram, meaning fields. Now they're using the word biofield for aura. And it's interesting that uh, popular movies like The Matrix um, okay. look at something beyond material as the, the, the substrate of, of reality, that reality isn't what we, what we think it is. And it's interesting, I, I just finished a book about world religions um, in microcosm, where I interviewed people around the world about their religious beliefs and practices. And they use the same kind of words that God is energy sources, energy and the force, and they use, they use similar words. So we're, we're getting away from God as father, Lord, <clears throat> vengeful, male, person with a beard. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I thought you might be curious because these visionary scientists take are in the vanguard. They had it takes so much courage to oppose the materialist paradigm in universities, science, journals, even Wikipedia. And so what motivated them? They're curious. A lot of them are musicians. Um, physician Larry Dossey says it takes a rabble rouser to actually develop the courage to take on the establishment. So some of them are rabble rousers. Um, more tended to be firstborn. Um, they were motivated often by their own or family members, usually their mother's psi experiences of like a VSP or knowing what was going to happen in the future. For people who are interested in astrology, they tended to be Sagittarius, Aquarius, and Libra. For those of you who are interested in Myers-Briggs, they tended to be extroverted, intuitive, feeling, and judging, which is interesting. Um, so our next question is, okay, quantum physics explains that there is a connection between everything, which would allow for like healing from a distance and um, and ESP clairvoyance. Um, so what what can we do with um, our mind? Um, at Harvard, the professor Ted Kapichuk is doing research on placebo effect, and he found that placebo works even if you tell the patient this is a little sugar pill, but it's helped other people deal with their carpal tunnel pain. Or whatever it is. So we placebo is often dismissed as kind of an annoyance, but it's highly significant. It means what we believe influences our body, power of mind. Um, in a book called Cured, Dr. Rediger interviewed people who'd had spontaneous remission, like from stage four cancer, and he he found that the key was they changed their sense of self, they changed their identity. And this fits into the next category perfectly, which is that people who have disassociative disidentity, dis disassociative dis or identity disorder, um, sorry, that they have completely different health issues depending on which altar is up front. So one altar could have diabetes and the other not. One could need reading glasses and the other not. One could be allergic to a certain med and the other not. To me, that's all you need to know about the, the power of mind. So a different personality, different body. Um, we know that healing prayer works as Larry Dawson has written about. Uh, Bill Bengston is an absolutely fascinating sociology professor who's done work with healing mice ingested injected with breast cancer and he he heals he thinks with resonance and frequencies and also by focusing on the future uh, it's worth reading his book um, hypnosis the stage hypnotherapist could say 
this is a cigarette. <clears throat> I'm putting it on my skin and uh, the person gets a blister. Um, remote viewing, we'll give it a try in a minute. Um, Charles Tart is a well-known psychologist and he said maybe in the future they'll use remote viewing and therapy for clairvoyance, which is something I do all the time. Um, <laughs> even, even machines respond to human emotion and attention. And Princeton and Stanford have done research where they look at the effect of putting humans in front of a random number generator and they get different results. And then they start putting them around the planet and they found that when the whole world is focused on something, then the random number generators become more coherent. They make a bell curve and not just crazy noise. And so far, one of the biggest effects was the bombing of the World Trade Towers. They got a big hit from that. Um, we, we should be able to get guidance and information from our intuition, ESP, dreams, meditation, um, and do healing as in Chinese traditional medicine, working with meridians, um, Indians working with the uh, chakras, uh, and in biofield healing. Um, okay, so the, um, the overall keys, what we have to keep in mind and how to access anomalous information is to use your whole brain. If we, if we approach something like clairvoyant reading, which we'll do in a minute, from, from the left brain, it gets in the way. It projects its perceptions, its beliefs, its worries, its fears, and it prevents the channeling of accurate objective information. So a way to keep the whole brain engaged is to keep the left analytical brain busy by asking a lot of questions. What color is this? What's the feeling that I get? How do I feel in my senses? And the other key is to focus on the sixth chakra because the sixth chakra between the eyebrow called the third eye is clear seeing and neutral. So if we focus on the sixth chakra, that'll get us far. And we also need to muscle test to um, make sure we're bilateral. And what I mean by that is if we um, uh, are homolateral, we get fuzzy brain, klutzy, bump into things, we'll get the opposite. So um, we, we can muscle test to see if we're homolateral or bilateral. So what we do is you see the picture of the hands on the right, you take your dominant pointer finger and put the middle finger on the nail bed of the dominant finger and make a statement that's true, like this is the year 2024, it should test strong. And then a statement that's false, like this is the year 2084 and it should test weak. And if it tests strong, strong or weak, weak or the opposite, then you know you're scrambled. And Brain Gym, G-Y-M, has different ways for us to get balanced, uh, which we'll do in a minute. So um, you need to muscle test in the clear, and you can also do it with one hand making a circle, the other trying to break through. Usually the traditional way is your name. So my name is Gail, my name is Mickey Mouse. And so the question is, well, what do you do if you don't correct if you don't test accurately. Um, you do bilateral movements like cross crawls and drink water. Um, and you can also uh, experiment with a pendulum. Uh, Barbara Brennan's book, Hands of Light has very detailed ways to approach um, uh, working with the chakras with a pendulum. Um, just for fun, let's try remote viewing. So I have a bag here, and what I'd like you to do is doodle, draw, and um, see what comes up for you, and pay attention to what isn't an ordinary thought. If it seems a little odd, you can pay attention to this. Um, so take a minute and 
doodle and draw, see what's in the bag. While you're doing that, um, Paul Smith has a, a different way. He also worked like the Stargate remote viewers in the Cold War era uh, for the government, for the military. And he, he, he works with tingles in his body. He was asked to remote view where contraband was in a shipping container, a ship. And he, he, he drew with a ruler where he felt a tingle and he located where the contraband, the drugs were found and it, they succeeded. So if you had a wild guess as to what's in this bag, Corinne, what would you say? Oh, it was funny because I was like imagining drawing. Um, yeah. Like I kind of landed on like a Hershey kiss, like a kind of like a Hershey kiss shape, like something. Um, what it is, is a little stuffed animal dog. And he says, I love you this much. And there's a heart. So the kind of the kiss and the heart work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so th that's some, it takes practice. That's to, funny. <laughs> um all right then um muscle testing you can use that uh to find out if something is useful or not useful like if i'm traveling and need to buy water i'll muscle test different water bottles and buy the one that tests strong but again you always have to test in the clear and clairvoyant reading how do we do it um you, my, I, the, the details are in my book, Essential Energy Tools, How to Develop Your Clairvoyant and Healing Abilities. Um, I draw on Louis Bostwick, who founded the Berkeley Psychic Institute, and he emphasizes being in your sixth chakra. Um, and he, he helps you do that by imagining a room in the center of your head, which you can imagine like this. And, um, and then looking out on a screen. So that's a, a device to keep you from jumping into the person you're reading said. So you you don't, it's bad psychic manners to jump into their, get in their space. <clears throat> so to stay in, we imagine we're in the room in the center of our head. We look out at our screen. We've muscle tested to make sure we're bilateral. And if emotions arise, we've dropped down to the emotional fourth or second chakra. Other principles for doing reading is imagining you have uh, roses all the way around your energy field to protect you. Um, keep asking questions to keep your left analytical brain occupied. It, it's really, reading is, is really passive. So that's what I mean. It's not an analytical active process. It's, it's listening. And um, then healing after you read like this area needs it's too hot then the active process is we send cold or it's a hole so we send a grid and fill in um, and it's also really important when you're doing this kind of work to separate and an easy way is just to click and it's it's hard to start with nothing so different people have developed different um, templates where you can say, okay, I want to read um, someone. Um, and you can read people from the past too. And so Lewis Fostwick developed this idea of putting it all your perceptions on a rose, imaginary rose on your screen. And so like the roots stand for how grounded the person is. And then David Furlong is a British psychic and he likes the template of a castle, like how are the Lord and Lady doing? Is there a job job bridge? How's the town doing? Is there a mode um, or a car? Is it a race car? Is it a junkie car? Is it a car that's moving forward? Is it stuck? And what I like to do is um, ask to see a movie clip and then ask it to start moving or a photo and then asking questions about that. Um, James von Krog, who's a channeler, uh, says really pay attention to all your physical sensations. So it kind of depends if you're auditory, visual, um, or 
kinesthetic, how you best access this paranormal information. So that takes practice. Um, and if we move on to healing, um, the key principle is to be a hollow bone. So healing can be harmful if you put your energy in someone else's body. So that's why we want to stay behind our roses and be a hollow bone. Nurses who do um, therapeutic touch, think of like a rainbow of healing energy coming into their shoulders, down their arms, and out their hands. And once you do a kind of a reading and see what the underlying issue is, some of the tools available to you are intention and visualization is a way of focusing your intention. I like Cindy Dale's um, notion of bringing in what she calls healing streams of grace. And of course, um, hands have traditionally been used in healing. And um, a, a simple little balancing exercise is to run your chakras while you're taking a walk clockwise. And clockwise is your right pinky finger on your navel. The way your thumb goes down is clockwise. Um, Reiki and other healing techniques use symbols like shokure. Um, colors have frequencies, so do sounds. Um, so chanting or mantras, uh, like just saying om, are useful. Um, Cindy Dale also suggests using elements, like if someone has a watery cough, you would imagine sending in metal or earth. Um, you can, it's always a good idea to ask for help by calling on healing guides or your favorite symbol of divinity, Mother Mary, Kuan Yin, Buddha. Um, I really like energy psychology that works with acupressure tapping. And there's a lot of research now that it's really effective. And you can see research eftuniverse.com as a, a starter. And we'll end with resources. There's uh, video interviews with the scientists and other practitioners on my YouTube channel. You can see my website, gailkimball.info. You can contact me at gkimball at csuchico.edu. And um, the, the names of the, the books in the trilogy, Mysteries of Reality, Mysteries of Healing, Mysteries of Knowledge Beyond the Senses, and you know about essential energy tools. There's two little books, Calm, How to Thrive in Challenging Times, Calm, Parents and Children, a guidebook, and a new book, World Religions and Microcosm, Family Practices Globally. So Corinne, any comments, questions, anything that wasn't clear or that struck you? Um, <clears throat> there's just a couple of things I would go, um, I would honestly, I would think about taking out the muscle testing 